Hello everyone, and welcome back to Monsters of the Mind. As always, I'm your host, Mr. G. Well, today's pretty interesting. Today we're talking about a monster that's been in two mythologies, and in both they're relatively unique. So today we're talking about the creature that was in both Egyptian and Greek mythology. The Sphinx. Sphinx means to squeeze. I don't get it either. In Egypt, sphinxes were a species, while in Greece there was only one. Egyptian sphinxes were actually considered good, while the, while the Greek sphinx was evil. And even the Greek sphinx was said to come from Egypt. And as I've said repeatedly, they were found in both Egyptian and Greek mythology. The appearance of sphinxes varied on region. In Egyptian mythology, sphinxes were lions, often depicted with the head of the current pharaoh. In Greek mythology, the sphinx was a lion with bird wings on its back and the head of a woman. As for their roles, in Egyptian mythology, the sphinx was more of a symbol than an actual monster. They were meant to represent the power that the pharaoh had, and unlike the Greek sphinx, they were portrayed as benevolent. Sphinxes were often described as being the guardians of the pyramid and defender against beings that were against the gods. Nowadays, sphinxes in Egypt are famous for the giant statue depicting a sphinx with the face of Pharaoh Khafre. In Greek mythology, the sphinx was a more malevolent and is sometimes shown as one of the spawn of Typhon and Echidna. The sphinx's most well-known role was when it attacked the city of Thebes, killing anyone who couldn't answer her riddle, what has four legs in the morning, two during the day, and three at night. Nobody was able to answer this question until... Until a man named Oedipus ended up figuring out that the answer was man, which starts life, morning, as a baby, becomes bipedal during the day, adulthood, and becomes an elderly with a walking stick, which is night. Shocked that someone solved her riddle, the Sphinx ended up hurling herself off a cliff. Ever since then, Sphinxes tend to be depicted in pop culture as like a hybrid of the two versions, with them having Egyptian motifs but having the Greek Sphinx's obsession with riddles. Now here's Vincent. You know, there's actually a sphinx for every single Egyptian pharaoh. Every time one of them becomes pharaoh, a new sphinx is created with their face. And, uh, like Mr. G said, they tend to be guardians over spirits and pyramids and stuff like that. As for the Greek sphinx, she's always trying to get in with the Egyptian sphinxes, but they keep rejecting her. And not to mention recently, she is incredibly bummed out because everyone knows the answer to her riddle nowadays, and she can't think of any more, so she spends most of her time sitting on the edge of a cliff thinking about her life. It's actually quite depressing to watch. Now let's look at the card. Alright, you're probably modding. You're probably thinking I should deduct points for the snake tail, but I've actually seen actual Greek art that depicts it with a snake tail, so no points deducted there. In fact, this card generally checks out, except for the fact that on the back it claims that there are some sphinxes with ram heads, but I don't think I've ever heard of that. I'm not denying that it might be true, but it's one of those claims that doesn't sound right. If anyone can, act, if anyone can find proof of this claim, I'd love to hear it. I think I'll give this one a 10 out of 10 just to be safe, though, because otherwise I can't really find anything wrong here. Now let's look at sphinxes and pop culture. Sphinxes were in Dungeons and Dragons, of course. And they're in My Little Pony, of course. Sphinx a Sphinx appears in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. In the God of War series, the Sphinx is a flying saber tooth cat. What? In Harry Potter, Sphinxes are described as creatures that can only talk in riddle. And they appear in the first Final Fantasy, where they're literally just recolored manticores. Now, when I was making this episode, I thought that sphinxes would be a lot more common than I thought they were. However, then I, then I realized why I thought that. It's mostly because the sphinx is pretty much the creator of the whole trope of monsters asking riddles. You know, how often have you seen a movie, read a book, played a game where there's a monster that you have to answer a question to get past? Yeah, you can pretty much thank the sphinx for the creating that trope. Well... That's all for this episode of Monsters of the Mind. Join us next time when we talk about the cannibal ghost. Bye!